coming at you here today with a 9.2 Venthyr Hunter uh, Beastmaster Hunter guide. This is kind of a supplement to my previous BM guide. Uh, that one really covered Night Fey primarily. Uh, I, it didn't seem like Venthyr was really going to be playable, and it still is the case that Venthyr is less damage overall. However, don't turn away yet, it is the actual best covenant for two fights in the Sepulcher of the first ones. So for that reason, I thought I'd make this supplement and kind of come out with a little bit of an additional kind of information, a buffer, in case you're looking to progress on uh, Halandris, for instance, or Dayun. Uh, specifically those two fights, this is a very, this is the best uh, BM Hunter build. You can play Night Fae on Dayun. And you can, te you, you can technically play Night Fae on Halandris. However, uh, in my opinion, Venthyr is better on both fights. And for that reason, it's worth leveling the Covenant. Um, it's really beneficial to your team uh, just to have this ability uh, to play this Covenant uh, for PM. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the guide. Um, let's start off with the Covenant abilities of Venthyr. So if you don't know, if you haven't played Venthyr before, uh, Door of Shadows is the ability that every class gets. It is a kind of teleport. Uh, it takes about, I believe it's a second and a half to cast the ability. And then after you cast the ability, you wind up um, like 10 yards away or something like that, or 35 yards. It's a, it's a pretty good distance. It's a really good mobility. It's not as fast or as instant um, as Night Phase Blink, but it is a good teleport ability nonetheless. You can cover distances that Night Phase can't, such as Zymox, you can get across the um, platforms from the main area to the second area, whereas Night Phase Blink obviously could not do that. As for the uh, Covenant ability specific to Hunter, we get Flayed Shot, which is a shot every 30, it's a 30 second cooldown. Um, it shoots a bleed at your enemy, basically, and every tick of that bleed has a 15% chance baseline, and with the Conduit, it's like 25-26% chance to proc Flayer's Mark. This gives you an instant kill shot that deals 25% increased damage, even more damage with the Conduit that we'll be playing, um, so it's very good. And this stacks with our legendary legendary ability, which we'll be talking about later, the Unity Lego, um, which causes every kill shot we hit on a target to cause them to bleed, and six targets around them to bleed for additional damage as well. So it's a very good Covenant ability. Um, so, uh, But one of the important things to mention, I guess I should cover this now, is unlike Night Fae, where you, something has to stand still in Wild Spirits, you hit this on them, and you can move, and it's constantly following them, uh, and you can constantly get kill, uh, kill shots off of it, so... For that reason, this is more of a mobile spec than Night Fae actually is. For our legendaries, uh, Memory of Unity, which I just talked about, Pouch of the Razor Fragments is what we, we'll be getting out of that. Bonus kill shots uh, cause six targets within 12 yards to bleed for 60% of the damage dealt by kill shot over six seconds. Uh, this stacks, so for a single target, every kill shot basically does an extra 60% damage, but as a dot over time. Um, and our secondary legendary that we'll be playing in unison with this is Ryle Stalker's Piercing Fangs, the same legendary you'd be playing with Night Fae and every other Covenant. Um, while Beastial Wrath is active, your pet's critical damage dealt is increased by 35%. For the Soul Binds we'll be playing, we'll be playing Nadia. Uh, and this is really primarily for Thrill Seeker and Fatal Flaw. So while in combat, you gain a stack of Thrill Seeker every 2 seconds, or 4 stacks when you kill an enemy. At 40 stacks, Thrill Seeker will be consumed to grant you Euphoria, increasing your haste by 20% for 10 seconds. And then after that, after that uh, 10 seconds of 20% haste, you will get Fatal Flaw, which gives you either 20% increased crit or Verse, whichever you currently have more of. Um, so essentially, it becomes a 20 second period of buff stats, followed by a 10 second period of downtime with no buff stats. Uh, it's really strong for that reason. It's a constant cyclical nature. Uh, it's a great amount of stats for this Covenant. This Soulbind is the best in my opinion. However, there are players who find Theatar um, to be more their style. And my guess is it's because you get two uh, Door of Shadow charges, which gives you basically two chances to teleport. And this could be useful to compensate if you don't feel like you can get away with just having one uh, Venthyr teleport. But for me, this is less damage overall because Mastery is just not our best Covenant. And also, the fights that we're picking this on, we're constantly moving. So the Soothing Shade ability, which causes uh, us to get Mastery, not our best at, but it gives us Mastery when we stand under the Umbrella area. Uh, 
you can't really stand under that if it's a mobile fight and you're constantly moving. Think Calandris, right? So it's kind of mediocre in my opinion. Um, party favors, however, is a really good uh, trait for this uh, Soulbind. You can get four or three percent primary stat, three percent agility with this, uh, which can be very strong. And if you do get the agility, that can compensate enough, in my opinion, that it might be worth to play it. But I still think Najda is the better Soulbind here. As for the conduits we'll be, play we'll be playing, we will be playing, <laughs> excuse me, uh, we'll be playing Empowered Release, which gives our Covenant, our Venthyr Covenant ability, Flayed Shot, an additional 11% chance to proc Flayer's Mark, and it increases the damage of our next kill shot by 11%. And this kill shot uh, damage increase is really good because it stacks in, you know, with the bleed that we're going to have from our Legendary, right? So... Uh, it's pretty good. This is probably our best conduit by a, a you know large margin, as most uh, Covenant conduits usually are. But this is the one that I would focus over everything else. Uh, after that, you want to go with one with the Beast, which increases all damage you and your pet deal while in Bestial Wrath by 7%. That's a lot of damage. Uh, where I think we have like 50 to 60% uptime with Bestial Wrath. Um, and even more, really, if we're playing, and we, what we should be playing, our third potency conduit, Ferocious Appetite, which gives Kill Command critical hits. Uh, basically, they will reduce the cooldown of Aspect of the Wild by 3.6 seconds per crit. So you run two pets, right? So every time Kill Command crits, 7.2 seconds of cooldown reduction on Aspect of the Wild. Extremely strong uh, conduit. Uh, you know, Aspect of the Wild is a two-minute cooldown. You're going to be kill commanding multiple times. Uh, you, you can have a really, really high uh, uptime on as, uh, Aspect of the Wild by doing this. So, Moving on, though, let's move on to our talents. We're going to be playing Animal Companion for our second pet. Sent a blood uh, for the extra barb shots. Uh, helps us keep Frenzy up. Gives us more crit. Let's us crit on kill command. Uh, let's us crit on kill shots. All these things are very synergetic. Uh, natural mending after that. This is just a good ability. This is our only real defensive um, if we're playing like a leech pet. So uh, you can play the 3 minute 20% DR um, with a tank pet. But natural mending is our best. You can... There's really no other good options in this row for rating. Um, for M+, you can play Trailblazer, Camouflage, that's up to you. After that, you want to play Thrill of the Hunt. Um, this every stack of Frenzy gives us 3% crit. Very, very strong. Uh, after that, Post Haste or Born to be Wild, good options, um, especially on Holandurus. Uh, Post Haste, in my opinion, is the best. The extra movement speed is really solid. Born to be Wild, very playable too. If you feel like you need an extra turtle during the fight or if you need an extra uh, aspect of the Cheetah, this can help with that. Um, after that, we want to play Stomp. This is the highest DPS talent in this row. Every barb shot you cast causes an extra hit. Um, afterwards, your pets will stomp the ground, dealing AoE damage. Very solid. And then finally, we will be changing the one talent change from 9.1 to 9.2. Instead of playing Aspect of the Beast, we will be playing Killer Cobra. This allows us to get every time uh, we Cobra shot in Beastial Wrath, we will get our Kill Command pack. So with our tier set synergy, um, this becomes really strong because it goes uh, kill command, cobra shot, which will be empowered because our kill command probably crit, and then back to kill command, and you just cycle through that. It's a really good single target combination. As for our rotation, our opener is going to be pretty instantly, and I definitely recommend making a macro to put everything in together. You're going to want to use your trinkets, your racial, your potion, If assuming you're lusting. Most people lust uh, are... It depends. Like you, it, so if you're lusting on pull, use your potion. If you're gonna get a second potion during the fight, use your potion on pull. Um, so you want to use that, and then you want to use aspect of the wild as well as flayed shot all in one global. So that's why I say macro this. It'll become very very strong that way, and you'll have to think a lot less about it. Um, so after that, after your huge amount of buttons in one global, you're gonna do double barb shot. Special Wrath, and one more Barb Shot. After that, that's our opener, it becomes really a priority list, okay? If you're going to drop Stacks of Frenzy, you want to press Barb Shot, right? The most important thing you can do is keep your Stacks of Frenzy up. After that, you want to press Aspect of the Wild, Flayed Shot. Um, those are the second priority after keeping Frenzy Stacks up. 
After that, we have kill shot. Kill shot, um, very high priority. You want to get these off even over things like Bestial Wrath and Powered Cobra Shots, just because it has so much synergy with our legendary. Um, it does increase damage. Um, kill shot is the priority. You want to use Bestial Wrath after kill shot, um, but make sure before you use Bestial Wrath that you get rid of all of your uh, barb shot charges. This is very important because you want to go into a Bestial Wrath and get those extra free barb shots um, without over capping our barb shots basically so the order is keeping frenzy up with barb shot aspect of the wild flayed shot kill shot bestial wrath then empowered cobra shot after empowered cobra shot it's kill commands uh, we want to be fishing for more empowered cobra shots and then finally an unempowered cobra shot to get our kill command back off of cooldown and yeah um so that covers our rotation. What makes this build good? So this is the best build for Mythic Commanders. You'll see almost every BM Hunter, almost every Hunter in general, playing BM for the Spite specifically, and playing uh, Benthir. The reason for that is it's a very mobile, you have a teleport, um, but more, most importantly, Halandris isn't going to stand still for your Wild Spirits when you're in the intermission, and your Wild Spirits will come up in intermission. So the way to maximize your damage is to have an ability that constantly hits the boss and lets you to do full amount of damage while you're moving. This has been there. That's what makes this good. This is also good for Mythic Dayun. Um, so specifically on Dayun, you need to have a way to get over the portals. You need a blink or you need a teleport or something. I'm sorry, not the halos that come out. The reason you can play Night Fae and turtle one of them but if you play this, you can jump over two of them or jump over one of them, um, and you never have to worry about the halos when there's three coming out. For that reason, you save a lot of raid damage, um, and it's also kind of tricky to do that sometimes and stay alive. So highly recommend playing this for Dayun, highly recommend playing this for Halandris. It is also viable for Mythic Regalon and Mythic Jailer. The amount of movement on Mythic Jailer uh, makes this really good. And for Mythic Ragalon, uh, it's also just a solid, uh, you know, spec, a solid covenant that allows you to do damage on the fly. I will say I think Night Fate is a little bit better on Ragalon, but I don't think this is far behind. And for Mythic Jailer, uh, it really depends on the fight. Um, if you're playing BM on that fight, you could play either Night Fate or you could play Venthyr. There is a lot of movement on that fight, so I definitely think it's uh, viable. If not the best, it's up there with Night Fae. It's competitive damage on Mythic Guardian and Mythic Skolex. Um, the nice thing about it on Mythic Guardian is nothing lasts long enough for your Wild Spirits. So, you know, you're constantly having these Flayed Shots go on the highest health target, and it lasts the entire duration um, for a lot of it. It just ends up being really good on the fights, surprisingly. It's not burst, but it is sustained AoE damage, and nothing lives long enough in that fight for you to need burst. So sustain kind of wins out. In addition to that, it's great mobility. Um, it does not require a boss to stand still in your Wild Spirits, as I mentioned, and it's a one-minute teleport instead of 130 Night Fate Blink, which is what makes this better on Mythic Dayun. So that kind of covers everything I had. Um, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like, comment, subscription. It helps tremendously, and I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great day. Peace out.